In the above footage, a customer can be seen arguing with a Denny's front desk employee. The employee tries to explain to her about an order malfunction, but the woman is so angry that she just can't tolerate the employee anymore and ends up splashing the spicy soup on her face. What happened next will be presented through a dramatized animated version ahead. Sometimes you meet the best people in life, and sometimes you meet the worst. In my case, I met both at the same time. A year back, I was going through a tough time financially. My mom died due to alcohol abuse and left a huge debt behind for me to take over. I was dreaming about going to law school and joining a respected law firm after graduation, but all that went away with her death. As sad as I was for losing my mom, I was also sad thinking I might have lost the chance to turn my life around, honestly. After crying myself to sleep almost every night, I finally decided to gear up and face the situation. I promised myself that I would work for the whole year to save money. Thank God we still had the house, and no matter how deeply attached I was to it, I had no other way than to sell it to repay the debt. When I got rid of the debt, I found myself having nothing but a bunch of clothes and my mom's old car. I slept in the car three nights straight because I couldn't afford to rent a room at a hotel. Those three days, I spent my mornings hunting for any job that would pay. On the third day, I finally found an opening at the local Denny's. It was a front desk job. The owner, Rodrigo, was a serious man who barely chit-chatted with the employees. He handed me a uniform and said, There are two rules at this place. First, you must greet the customers with a smile even if they had to be forced. And second, under no circumstances can you lose your calm. Remember, customers are our priority. Sure, I'll do my best. Good. We'll see you tomorrow. I was finally happy that day. The next morning, I showed up five minutes beforehand. I was dying to get paid, so I did my job with utmost sincerity. I worked as a cashier, and no matter how weird, rude, or creepy the customers were, I greeted them with a smile while saying, Welcome to Denny's. May I take your order? The other employees who worked there were also nice to me. In a way, things started looking up for me. It was a busy Friday night. The restaurant was booming with customers, and watching people eat with their family and friends made me feel lonely. I won't say I was distracted, but I kind of got caught up in my thoughts when a customer yelled at me. Are you gonna take my order or what? Her voice was so coarse that a few customers sitting close to the counter stopped talking and looked in her direction. I quickly got my act together and said in an apologetic voice, I'm sorry, ma'am. Welcome to Denny's. Can I please take your order? Calling her ma'am cooled her down. She frowned a little and then said, A cup of soup. And remember, I want the soup hot, like flaming hot. Can you do that, stupid girl? It felt bad when she called me stupid, but I remembered Rodrigo's rule number two, so I kept my calm. I nodded my head with a forced, fake smile and said, Of course, ma'am. Will that be all? She looked me up and down in a very weird way, and then said, Why? Do you think I can't afford anything else? No, no, I just wanted to know if I could be of any more help, ma'am. It's our job to follow the complete requirements of the customers. I don't know where all that stuff came from, but I handled the matter the best way possible. She looked at me with a pissed off face, and then said, Just bring the soup for me, and remember, I want it hot, piping hot. I will. Please grab a seat. Your food will be on the way. She didn't take a seat, though. Instead, replied, I'll wait here. Don't mess up my order, stupid girl. Okay. I went to the kitchen to hand the order to our chef, Joe. Taking the slip from me, he said in a surprised voice, Just a bowl of soup? That's all? Uh, does the customer look homeless? Um, no. She looks like a big bully. Oh boy, well that doesn't sound right. What happened? Nothing much. She insulted me, that's all. Uh, show me which one. The entrance of the kitchen gave a corner view of the cash counter. I carefully pointed my finger at the woman. Joe said in a low voice, No need to ask her name. Must be Karen. <laughs> all the staff in the kitchen joined him, and I couldn't be serious or upset anymore. Joe smiled and said, The weekend's tomorrow, and tonight you're gonna get paid, so just bear through a couple hours, okay? 
I smiled, receiving such warm behavior from him. I went back to the counter to assist the other customers, while Joe prepared the soup for her. Amidst all that, I forgot to tell Joe that the Karen wanted her soup flaming hot. I didn't feel the need to go back just for that information, as I had more customers to ring up. The woman stood there, watching me like a hawk, and then probably felt the need to use the washroom. I saw her turning back and going to the restroom. The soup arrived within the next five seconds, and I was glad that once she came back, I could hand her the order and be done with her. She took way more time than I expected, and finally, when she came back, I smiled at her one last time and said, Here's your soup, ma'am. Have a good night. She almost snatched the cup from my hand while giving me a death stare and then opened its lid to check. What happened next? I wasn't ready for that at all. Her face turned red in anger, and she shouted, This isn't hot! I wanted hot soup! What the hell is this? Ma'am, please calm down. Shut up, you stupid bitch! And that's when I couldn't pretend anymore. I said in a pissed off tone, Ma'am, you can't just insult me like this. It's not right. Really? You're working for me, and you want to teach me how the job is done? I don't work for you, ma'am. I work for the owner of this Denny's. You want to be respected, then you have to respect me as well. Even though I was angry and answered her back, I still didn't raise my voice or use a single curse word. Her eyes were filled with hatred. I could see in her face how much she wanted to beat the crap out of me. But I knew she would not be able to do that as we were surrounded by people and CCTV cameras. Yet still, she did something horrible. She suddenly took the cup, removed the lid, and threw the spicy soup right at my face. Even though it wasn't piping hot, it was still hotter than room temperature. The contents of the cup went into my eyes and I began screaming in pain. My eyes! Help! Help! Everyone witnessed what happened, and the woman realized the huge mistake she had made. She turned back and ran to the exit, hoping to leave the restaurant, when Rodrigo jumped in and blocked her way. One of my female co-workers, Lucy, went straight to the crazy woman and gave her a tight slap. I'm gonna call the cops, okay? Help Ava! Rodrigo dialed 911, and I was taken to the restroom by some customers. I splashed cold water over and over on my face, which was burning like hell at that moment. The cops came in and took that psycho woman into custody. Tears rolled down my eyes when Rodrigo hugged me. The fact that he stood up for me made me feel that just like there are evil people in this world, angels exist too. Hey guys. World, angels exist too. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. The story you are about to see is based on this real footage. A man was having his meal when another customer, a mysteriously strange woman, lunged at him with a sudden outburst. She started hitting the man for no reason, and the man had to get up and fight back in self-defense to free himself from her. The following animation is a dramatized version of what happened between these two people. I want you out of my apartment right now! My girlfriend was pushing me towards the front door of the place. Jenna, babe, wait! It, it's not really what you think, please! I- Do you think I'm an idiot? Stacy told me! She saw you with her own eyes, do you understand? Get out! I don't want to see you! Once I was within a few feet of being in the hallway outside Jenna's apartment, I finished walking out and turned so I could meet her eyes. Babe! Jenna didn't even try to listen to me as she slammed the door right in my face. Ugh, thanks Stacy. That day after work, 
My girlfriend was waiting for me in the living room of her apartment. She was furious, as apparently her friend had seen me with another woman the day before. Stacy wasn't wrong. I had met an attractive chick, but it was just that. I loved Jenna. I didn't want to end our relationship, although right now was not the ideal time to talk to her. Anyway, I was hungry, so I decided to stop by to eat somewhere on my way to a hotel. The sun began to hide as I walked. It was then that I saw a bright yellow sign a few streets away from me. Denny's, it said. I didn't usually eat at that restaurant, but that night I decided to go. Just before entering, I started to hear my But that night, I decided to go. Just before entering, I started to hear my cell phone ring. It was a call from my friend Andre. Hey man, are you home? Not really, bro. Jenna kicked me out. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I was near and uh, I just thought... Uh, I'm outside the Denny's near home. Uh, you wanna come? Yeah, I'll be there in a bit. I wouldn't wait for my friend out here as it was starting to get cold. So I went into Denny's. The place wasn't too crowded, so I was able to sit in one of those places that, instead of chairs, had something similar to a sofa. Thus, time passed while I waited for my friend. At one point, I heard the Denny's doors open, so I turned around to see if it was Andre who was entering. It was a dark-skinned chick wearing a red sweater and over it, a black jacket. The sweater hood was covering part of her face, so she couldn't be seen clearly, but I couldn't care less about her. I took my eyes off the woman and continued to look at my cell phone. Soon, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed how she walked past me and quickly sat down at one of the nearby tables. Are you on your way? It was the woman who was speaking on the cell phone. Come on, please. They're really doing it. I'm so scared, please. Can't you try to understand me for once in your pathetic life? I'm telling you the truth. I... Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll wait for you right here. Unintentionally, I had been looking at that woman. After ending the call, she pulled the sweater hood off her face. It was then that I could see her better. She seemed as if she hadn't slept for days. But the strangest thing was her huge eyes, which were looking side to side nervously. What the heck is wrong with her, I thought. Suddenly, her gaze shifted to me. The expression on her face was one of disgust and fear. What are you looking at, huh? Excuse me? Don't play dumb. I saw you. You were looking at me. What do you want, huh? Are you... Are you one of them? Uh, one of whom? Don't come close to me. A friend of mine is coming soon if you try anything. The woman was so nervous that she seemed to be hyperventilating and sweating. I have no idea what you're talking about, chick. What? Suddenly... Someone opened the door. Bro! Since my friend had arrived, I ignored the woman and started talking to him. But I couldn't stop getting the feeling that I was being watched. At one point, I glanced over at her and realized that she was staring at us with an uneasy expression. What is it, man? I put my gaze back on Andre. There's a weird woman over there. A weird woman? Yeah. Before you got here, she told me a lot of nonsense. And now, she's staring at us, bro. Suddenly, a fat, bald man walked past us and sat down with the woman. Finally! You took your time. Willow, you have to stop this. Go, just look for help. I, I don't know, but you have to. Are you serious? Because I am. They're following me. Is she the one who's speaking? Yeah, damn. She sounds like a crazy chick. Yeah, she's a crazy chick, all right. My friend and I, who were watching the woman, saw how she suddenly turned to look at us. See? Them. There are two of them. Willow. What do you want? I'm calling the police. What? What the heck? What is wrong with you? You're crazy! A person who was at another one of the tables took out her cell phone. 
I suppose to start recording. A loud noise was heard throughout Denny's, and then everyone was silent for a few seconds. Ugh. The woman in front of me began to move slowly. She seemed dizzy. Even if I had done it in self-defense against her, seeing her like that made me panic. Hey, are you okay? I didn't mean to hurt you. I... <laughs> was I listening well? Was she laughing? What? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were following me. You wanted to hurt me. Did you think I wouldn't notice? I'm not that dumb. <laughs> Whoa, what the heck? I'll call the police. You'll rot in jail. <laughs> You're really out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's what everyone says. But look, I got you. It was all true. <laughs> the way she was laughing, and especially how wide her eyes were, and her expression on her face was disturbing me. Uh, let's go on. After turning around, I realized that the bald man was behind me. Stand still. The workers called the police. When the cops arrived, they took us to the police station, where we cleared up the misunderstanding. The bald man told them everything that had happened, and revealed that the woman named Willow had survived a kidnapping months earlier and had been frequently paranoid ever since. She believed that any unknown person who stared at her was part of the group that had kidnapped her, and therefore that she was in danger all the time. I will never forget the disturbing expression on her face the last time I saw her when I left the police station. All my life, I was educated to be a quiet person. I was taught to respect others and to understand that everyone is different. I never have to get into other people's problems and I will never be in trouble myself. Earl, my boyfriend, was raised the same way I was. So together, we were never that couple who go over to watch fights or try to see people get hurt in car accidents. This always helped us maintain a quiet, uneventful life. But sometimes, when danger calls, there is no stopping the inevitable. That night, Earl and I had come home tired from work and neither of us felt like cooking. He wanted to stay home and order Chinese food, but I felt like getting some air, so I convinced him to go to Denny's. He was a little hesitant, but we hadn't been out in a while, so he agreed. When we arrived, we chose a place near the window, and since we hadn't been together for a while, he sat next to me instead of across from me. We were looking at what to order until a voice from the table in front of us caught our attention. This damn food is cold. What's your problem? I'm sorry, sir. I'll go back to the kitchen and bring the... Oh no, you, you want me to starve? Are you stupid? I don't know what to tell you, sir. If you want, you can place a complaint. Are you making fun of me? Do I look like an idiot? I know this, blondie. Wasn't your mom the bitch that worked at the bus stop and got beaten to death? <laughs> oh yeah, it was on the news. Did you get hired because you're an orphan? Does that mean this damn restaurant hires useless orphans? Too bad that they killed your mom so late. They must have beaten her when she was pregnant. I'm sorry, sir. I have to go wait on other tables. As this couple laughed, we looked at each other's faces in shock at what we had heard, but decided to stay out of the way and go about our business. The last thing we needed was to attract the attention of these animals. So, you went to visit Paul the other day? Yeah, I stayed at his house for a while. It's amazing how much his pet has grown. Oh, you mean Lula? What a cute dog. Oh, she's beautiful. But you'd be impressed by how fat she is. Coming from Paul, I'm not surprised. Interrupting our chat, the man at the table in front of us was staring at us, furious. Who the fuck do you think you're calling fat? Sir, I wasn't referring to you. Oh no? Do you think I'm stupid? You think I haven't been called that before? Break their heads, Ned. I heard them. They were making fun of you. That bitch said you were a fat creep. Oh yeah? Did you try to lie to me? In front of my fucking wife? Leave us alone. We didn't do anything to you. Shut the fuck up! I'll ask your opinion when I need a cooking recipe! What? You know what? Fuck you. I would never discriminate against you for being fat, but I will discriminate you for being a disgusting, violent piece of garbage. The man became even angrier. 
His face was red. His veins were swelling more and more in his face and looked like they were going to explode. His eyelids were so red that he looked like he was about to have a stroke. Without another word, the man tried to hit me wildly, but Earl blocked the blows with his body. Meanwhile, the woman was desperately encouraging him to keep hitting us. Suddenly, it was all over. The restaurant security took the man away and the woman went after them, insulting them. I just started crying and hugged Earl, who seemed to be a little shocked, but fine. The waitress and the restaurant authorities apologized to us and quickly brought us our food, but we knew they were not to blame. After eating, we left without having dessert. The night was obviously ruined. Hey, thanks for covering the punches. That animal would have killed me. No need to thank me. I, I'd do anything for you. Aw, did the bumps make you sentimental? <laughs> <laughs> he must have hit me harder than I thought. <laughs> I love you, dummy. I love you too. From one second to the next, those two psychopaths were in front of us. The man climbed on top of Earl, choking him. <laughs> Get him! Get that no! I won't let you! I ran in the direction of where the two men were fighting, but the sound of someone pulling the safety off a gun stopped me. When I turned around, the woman was standing behind me, pointing a magnum at me. You take one more step, and not only will I cut open your chest and rip your heart out with my teeth, but I'll put so many holes in your boy that even a sponge would be jealous. <laughs> Crying, I could only watch as the man continued to choke the man I loved. I could only pray that it would stop as soon as possible. So you think you can humiliate me in public, do you? Do you think you're better than me? Defending that stupid woman and looking like a hero? You know what, kid? Heroes! They die young! And you... You're lucky I'm a gentleman. Otherwise, you would have been the first to die. He and the woman ran away, leaving the scene of the crime in their car. At that same instant, I ran to Earl, crying. The police told me that they would do everything possible to find these people and bring them to justice, but that at that moment they had no information about him. I hope justice will be done.